Well, hello everybody and welcome to another Lockdown Friday Live. So um, I hope all of you are, are, are still well. I hope no one's um, got the virus um, and I hope everyone is uh, not going insane sitting there at home bored uh, at the mine. So um, uh, thank you as always for joining us. And uh, we've got a few things to talk about today. Uh, not many things. Um, there's just not much going on during the lockdown other than me running around uh, packing up orders all day long. So uh, right, let's see who's uh, joining us. Finley's first on. Hello Finley. I hope you are well my vote my friend and otter's next hey dave how are you holding up i'm holding up good thanks mate you wait there bobo um so yeah i'm doing all right um still just running around it's just absolute madness here um i'm so behind in emails i think i'm about four or five hundred emails behind I'm, I'm trying to go through and priority and sorting that out uh, we've got tons of paypal disputes going on for orders that still haven't got there after three four five weeks um uh, currently refunding almost as much as we're sending out at the moment but this is just this lockdown situation. I think eventually people will cotton on the fact that the raw mail is going really slow. Um, until then, there's nothing I can do, guys. If you have ordered, be prepared to wait. It can be anything from 7 to 20 odd days. We've had some customers now waiting over... Uh, I think one customer has waited a month, um, but that was uh, that's a, a foreign one. Uh, and several customers are waiting well over over three weeks. So yeah, it's it's an absolute nightmare at the moment. Uh, but yeah, other than that, uh, and other than the stress of all that, I'm, I'm doing well. And... Uh, Hello. What's all that about? Okay. Um, right. Um, yeah, Michael Cooley. Hello, my friend. I I'm very well, thank you. Uh, Michael Brimmer. Hello as well. Um, uh, Michael, I'm going to mention this uh, a little later on. I've got a little present for Michael. I'm going to wait till a few more people join us and, and then show it off a little bit. Um, so uh, Robert Skew's there. Darren's there. Um, hi, guys. I hope everyone is all very well. Uh, morning, Andy Ray. <sighs> Lying in all this time during the lockdown. I don't know. So there's nothing in there, Bobo. It's empty. Uh, right, uh, let's put this on mute, I can hear this little blip going off, it does get annoying. Uh, Eddie James says, thank you for my Dynamo book order. I, um, you're most welcome. Uh, we're the only people selling that book that's actually signed, so uh, I hope you like that one, Eddie. Uh, Rob is there, Rob says, um, hey Dave, hope you're okay. I'm very well, guys. Um, uh, for everyone who's saying, how am I, thank you very much. Um, I tell you what, actually, um, I can't thank you guys enough for the amazing support you have given me. I mean, honestly, the support, the messages, the emails coming in, just the little notes on the order saying, hope you're keeping well, thinking of you. Um, I tell you what, there's so much love going around in the Magic community at the moment, and um, I read every single one. I don't get a chance to reply to every single one. That would be impossible. But, yeah, those little messages keep them coming. It really does make a big big difference i mean i'm here all day every day on my own so just picking up an order and having a nice message from somebody at the bottom really does perk up my day so thank you so much for that guys really do appreciate it thank you for all the lovely gifts you've all been sending in as well um how many people got on the moment uh let's wait till we get a few more people and i'll show off what michael uh, has sent me or mick should i say has sent us um Kenny says, where's the hair? Yeah, do you know what? Um, it grew really long. And even this morning, I still had hair. And I looked in the mirror. And my hair, when it goes long, it's, it's okay when it's short, a little bit short. Uh, but when it gets longer, I, I, my hair kind of just goes straight out that way. It doesn't go down or anything. And, you know, because it's bald at the top and coming out here, I started to look a little bit like uh, Sideshow Bob. Or, um, no, sorry, you're not Sideshow Bob. Um, 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 the clown, um, Krusty. Uh, yeah, it just kind of looked really weird. I looked in the mirror and I'm trying to straighten it down and it's just, I thought, just going to go back to, to shaving it. So I shaved it all off and I think it looks so much better. I like it. Uh, there we go. So, uh, right. Uh, Finley says, do you print on translucent paper and can sell? Um, in theory, yes. Uh, you can get transparent uh, paper. Uh, it's like, um, uh, not a Fablon. It's, uh, what do they call it? on mind blank at the moment but yeah it's a clear paper acetate clear acetate paper that will go through a laser printer um so if you have a laser printer at home yeah i think you can do it yourself um in fact i think you can even get inkjet printable uh, paper as well so just search for printable um acetate uh, a4 and then you should be able to just whack it in your printer straight off uh if not we can always arrange to do that but then i'd have to order a whole pack of it in and get it printed so uh yeah it depends what you want uh finley probably not best during the lockdown as well because i get so little time as, as i said i just don't have time to uh, do everything uh, answer the emails and make everything as well so uh but yeah do try it yourself it's quite easy to get a hold of and uh, you probably find it on amazon or ebay or somewhere like that uh, matthew says good afternoon dave i hope you and Bubo are keeping well we are both well thank you my friend um, uh, uh, Vish, uh, Vishnudas, uh, Das, <laughs> hello there, uh, and he says hi Bobo, hello from Vish, yeah, what's up, um, 
Andy Digley says hello, Frank Valenti, uh, hello Dave, glad to see you today and glad to see you guys as well, well kind of see you, you know what I mean. Um, uh, Simon Cartwright says hi Dave, great to see you, really appreciate the Illusionist Band, glad you're still going strong. Yeah, we're still going strong and you guys are placing those orders, even the smallest order that comes in, everyone keeps us going, you know, if you guys we're saving on your money and not spending anything, uh, we probably wouldn't last throughout this whole thing. So yeah, I really do appreciate it. We're still at about 50%, 25 to 50% of orders, but it's enough to keep us going so long as the government do pay the, uh, the wages at the end of the month. Um, so yeah, that's all good, guys. Um, uh, tricks are good, thanks, Sean Mac. Um, uh, Chris Allen says, received my darkest corners this morning. Thanks so much for getting out so quickly. You're most welcome, Chris. I can't remember when you ordered, so I can't remember how long it took to get there, but I'm glad you, you have got it. Um, yeah, we've got some more in, by the way. So uh, we've got quite a few more of the um, uh, the darkest corners. We sold out almost immediately, really. I think about three days. But we've got a load more in. Uh, also new in, uh, well, not new in, but new back in stock um, is Darwin uh, Ortiz um, at the car table. So uh, that's the. Uh, it's been out of stock for quite a while, uh, and we've just got it back in. So uh, that's in really good. Uh, back in stock as well, very much in demand is Interpreting Magic. Uh, when Approaching Magic came out, um, everyone bought. Approaching Magic and then bought the interpret uh, Interpreting Magic and this sold out and then no one had it for ages so it's now back in print again we've got them back here and we've got about 20, 20 odd copies back in I think um, so yeah that is uh, ready to go and um, we do have an Alex's book corner for you later uh, he's had a nightmare with his internet at the moment so he's managed to get us uh, a short version down we'll explain that later and we can have a look at that so uh, Paul Leach is there hello Paul it's been a long time my friend how are you um, I hope you're well uh, Dean Dugan says hi. Um, Jonas says uh, hi all. Where's Max? Uh, Max? Max Gibson? Uh, I don't know. Uh, he's usually here. Uh, I presume that's what you mean. Uh, Charlie Robinson's there. Hi, uh, Charlie. Uh, he goes, um, sorry for my bad behaviour of missing last week's live. Charlie, you've got things to do, mate. You've got things to do. You don't have to meet every single one, but yeah. Good to have you here again. Um, Tim Shady says, happy Friday. Uh, David Harris, hi Friday. Uh, sorry, hi David. Uh, I sent you all right today, David. Thank you again for that. Uh, Walter says, um, Good afternoon, the noon, uh, and to you, uh, Walter. Um, Peter Booth says, "Do you have tricks that can be done for zero audience members?" Hmm. Now, when you say zero audience members, do you mean doing stuff at home on your own and impressing yourself? If if that's the case, I, I guess anything could be done. Not that it impress you much. Um, what are you doing, Bobo? You just want attention, don't you? Um, uh, zero audience members. Uh, yeah, uh, can you expand on that, uh, please, Peter? Um, I mean, do you mean no one in front of you? Uh, in which case, it's kind of, what are you doing? You've got to stay up there. That is a little trick I have for keeping Bobo in play because there's something in the shop she really doesn't like. I found out at Christmas that she hates this. So I keep it by uh, uh, on, on standby. So look, what's that? Ooh, what's that? Ooh. No? She quite often puts her wings up like that and sort of stands back, but she doesn't like it too much. I'm going to keep that there for a bit and hopefully it'll stop her coming down. Uh, right. Uh, Chris Gillender says, Hi Dave, first time catching you live. I changed my dialysis session to be ready. Well, thank you, Chris, and good to have you, uh, have, good to have you joining us live. What have I put in this kombucha today? Uh, or what should I put in it? Otar says, in case you missed it, here's a link to the review of Scams Minds products. Oh, brilliant. Um, yeah, I have missed that. I, I had no idea you've done it. I've been waiting for it for a while, Otar. So, um, yeah, guys, check out Otar's link. Um, Otar, if you don't know, is our um, kind of Swedish pyromaniac R&D unofficial department. Um, and um, he's done some amazing videos for us. And uh, they usually involve blowing a lot of stuff up. And with the amount of time Otar's got in his hands at the moment, uh, even though it may be difficult without your staff, Otar, but um, uh, yeah, do check it out. And I will be checking it out as soon as the show is over. Uh, can't wait for that. Uh, Barry says, oh, hi Dave, when I'm on the website, the prices are in dollars. Any idea why? Uh, yes, Barry, right. So um, if you look at the price, next to the price, there are three boxes. One is a euro, one is a pound, and then one is a dollar sign on the right-hand side. So at some point, you must have accidentally clicked the dollar sign on the right-hand side, or if you logged in from America and the IP address was recognized um, in America, or maybe if you're using some kind of, um, um, I don't know, what do you call it? Where it, it hides your IP. Maybe that's why. So if you just click on the pound, everything will go to pounds. Uh, and it doesn't ch uh, change it for the exchange rate of the day as well. So anyone in the US is watching, uh, yeah, that exchange rate should be pretty much accurate. Um, uh, sorry for the spelling, says Walter. Uh, you're forgiven. Um, right. Uh, Dave Patterson. Uh, how, Dave? How, Dave? How? Um, 
Uh, I came up with a Sussex Magic Circle uh, to see you. Okay, um, nice to see you uh, joining us, uh, David, for the live. And um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed the visit. Uh, Eddie Grant says, hi, Dave. I hope all is good in health, uh, with health and business. Uh, the health is good and the business is still going. So uh, that's all good. Uh, How is the fish and chips, says Sean Mack. Yeah, so uh, if you missed it last week, um, uh, somebody mentioned about fish and chips and I said I haven't had fish and chips for a long time and I mentioned that I've been so busy don't often get a chance to eat lunch. Next thing I know, Martin Sanders and good old Marty had um, organised a fish and chips to be delivered here, five o'clock dead. So uh, I picked out on those at half five. Um, I, I, I usually eat very, very healthy and as much as I love fish and chips, I try and stay away from it because, um, you know, I do look after my health and uh, it's probably not the, the best of things. I'm very much... Uh, uh, a clean eater but um, it was incredibly delicious and made me feel very guilty afterwards but yeah it was good uh, oh I see is that your way of getting around the uh, pine cone is it uh, keep it up there will that help will that stop you not bothered anymore you're used to it now okay you stay up there uh, Scott says hi Dave how's you uh, try ringing earlier, uh, but take it you're busy uh, being on your own. Yeah, Scott, so if I'm down in the workshop, I can't always get up to the phone in time. If I go to the post office, which I have to do a couple of times a day, then I'm out, the shop's going to be closed down. And sometimes I just don't get time. So uh, there have been times where the phone's been ringing all morning and I just physically don't have a chance to answer it because if I do, I'm not going to get the orders packed up and sent out. Um, that's happened a few times recently. So uh, yeah, I don't always get a chance, my friend. Um, but yeah, your order, your uh, key was sent... Um, uh, yeah, was it today? I think you ordered, yeah, whenever you ordered, it was the same day. Um, a lot going on up here, so my mind. Uh, Steve Lawrence says, hi, Dave. Got my winnings of block yesterday. Thanks, Dave. Never won anything before. You're most welcome, Steve. I hope you like it. I don't know much about it, but I know it's quite popular. So, um, yeah. Um, and that was sent, uh, that's what, two weeks ago. It's taken two weeks to get to you. Wow. Quite a bit. Uh, Sideshow Dave, yeah. <laughs> um... Dave, I uh, hope all is well. Uh, Stephen Lovering, um, yeah, very well. Thank you, Stephen. I hope all is well down in the West Country. Um, Tom's there. Tom says, afternoon, Dave, and to you, buddy. Uh, right, Chris Gillanders, I have the same crusty hair issue. Yeah, it just, well, that side looks terrible. Try shaving it. Streamline. Um, John Taylor, it's good to see Bobo and you are looking good. Thanks, John. I hope you are very well, my friend. Um, it's been a while. Um, Michael Brimmer, printable acetate, works on inkjet, but the quality isn't great. Thank you for that, Michael. Uh, and now we've got a few more people here, actually. I'm going to just show you what Michael uh, has very kindly uh, made for us. So uh, Michael has a little business making mugs. And Michael made me this. Isn't it amazing? Yay, can you see that? I'm going to, I'm going to zoom in on that, actually. So, uh, right. Uh, there we are. I'm going to zoom in on that. Doesn't look like much, does it? However. Do -do -do -do. A little bit of magic going on. Give it a second. Here it comes. Hopefully the kettle's not too cold. <laughs> there we go, it's starting to come. Is it gonna go all the way up? I might need to fill it up a tiny bit more actually. Proud to be a prop dogger. How's about that? So that is amazing. Thank you, Michael, for that. Michael sent me two of these. So uh, yeah, they uh, they kick the arse out of our prop dog cups. Where's our prop dog cups? Yeah, here's our prop dog cups. So uh, that kind of kicks the arse out of those, doesn't it? There you go. Right. So thank you very much for that, Michael. Uh, um, Michael Mick. Don't know what you'd call you. Uh, yeah, very, very awesome. Right, uh, Robert Skew says, Dave, are you planning to make the Starbucks chop cup again in the future? Uh, no, uh, Robert. The reason I stopped making them um, is because somebody, uh, I don't know who, uh, but somebody, possibly one of our competitors, uh, somebody phoned up Starbucks and said, hey, Starbucks, uh, this company called PropDog are copying your uh, logo, uh, putting it on a cup, which I wasn't. So um, uh, Starbucks sent me a cease and desist and said, stop copying our logo. So I replied back and said, look, I'm not copying your logo. I'm buying your cups. And I was literally buying the cups from Starbucks, going around all the Starbucks, buying their cups, buying them online, converting them to chop cups and selling them on, which to me was like 
buying a car, pimping up and selling it on. Yeah, you should be able to do it. And then Starbucks says, oh, okay, um, but you still can't sell them because if you're putting a magnet inside it and somebody puts it in a microwave and it goes bang, uh, we're held liable. I'm like, well, one, you're not held liable. And two, no one's going to put it in a microwave because no one's going to use it as a chop. It's a prop. And they said they can't take that risk because somebody left it on a bus you know and, and somebody else picked it up and took it home uh, and that's the problem so because of that i got a cease and desist and starbucks lawyers are not worth fighting for whether i believe them in the right or not so uh, unfortunately we cannot make them anymore um i've tried finding some other decent branded cups um but th th there's nothing out there really convertible like the chop cups were for starbucks they were just the perfect cup the small cup and the big cup uh we do have a chop mug um we can do i mean we couldn't use a cup like this because it's got a flat bottom and if you drop a, a a ball in it that ball has got far too much room far too much room to move around or roll around there so it might not engage the magnet and you can't have a magnet that covers the whole lock because it'd be too powerful and you can't have little magnets all around it because it wouldn't work so yeah it's got to be a cup that sort of goes down to a decent size uh, and the starbucks ones were they were perfect so Bobo, come on behave it's no use anymore is it that to find something else that scares you there we go so yeah, um, unfortunately not. But yes, I said we do have another blank prop ch uh, chop cup. If you want to see a picture of it, just send us a message and, uh, and we'll um, uh, we'll show you a, uh, send you a photograph of it. All right. Uh, hope all the doggers are doing well. <laughs> says Walter. Uh, Dave Bonnie, please you're here, Dave. I always look forward to Fridays at Prop Dog. I do as well. It's my one time of the day where I haven't got to run around because I make room for this. So yes, there's work he's doing, but at the moment it's just like, well, this is my hour, hour and a half on the live. Forget everything. And for this hour and a half, there's no pressure, no stresses. The phone's off the hook. I don't feel the need. Uh, well, the uh, uh, I don't have to answer the emails while I'm doing this. So it's a break for me and I enjoy it. Trust me. Uh, it's going to be a long weekend. Um, uh, right, Timmy Taylor, nice to see you, Dave, and to see you joining us, Timmy, as well. Thank you for that. Uh, Andy Tigley says, got my order yesterday, including my looseness band. Thank you. Uh, wow, it's been a long time, two weeks. Uh, Luke Cloth says, any relatively new short fun effects suitable for social, social media? Uh, looking to get some more Insta videos done and work my way through the um, unsuitable draw. So, Luke. If you go to the main website, scroll down about three three quarters of the way down the page, you will see a section that says silver screen magic. And anything we find that comes in that's very visual and good for Instagram, for YouTube, social media videos, or TV, we put in that category. So there's loads of stuff in there, things like the, um, uh, where is it? Uh, there we are, candy crust, things like that, and the delicious change, you know, delicious change with the sweet box that swoops over. Anything that's visual like that, we put in there. Um, other than that yeah nothing else new come in at the moment we've got deal or uh deal not deal or deal yeah, deal or not deal come in uh, i'll show you that in a little while um uh, but that's not really a visual thing for, for for that um but that's the only new thing that's coming i'm going to be showing you um uh, Dean Jorgensen, Dean Jorgensen says, afternoon Dave, hope you're keeping well and staying sane. I am indeed, uh, Dean. Um, Robert Van Buren says, says hello, um, and, uh, and to you Bobo as well. Uh, Dan Slater, will you be getting any Bond Lee 1.7 manipulation balls in red by any chance? Are we out of red, are we? Yeah, in fact, we're out of all the 1.7s. Um, no, we, well, we haven't got any at the moment. Uh, the thing is, during the lockdown period, because we're not taking enough money to, to buy anything new, we, we probably won't be restocking until after the lockdown, until we're back on, on, on tea, because at the moment, yeah, we can't just order something small from Bond Lee in Hong Kong, and they've got problems shipping stuff out as well. I have to place a really large order. It's expensive on the shipping, the customs fees. Um, so, yeah, we won't be doing it for a little while. So, uh, unfortunately, luck, my friend. Um, Graham Hickman says, hi, Dave. Uh, you're looking well, which is good. Uh, thank you. Uh, question, please, uh, do you have in stock backstab? Uh, yes, funny enough. A backstab, there we are. So we've got, uh, I think we've got about five copies of it in. Uh, I haven't had a look at it yet. We've only just got it in. Um, it's been out a while. It's been out since last year. Uh, but we've got about five copies in. And um, yeah, I, I, I've had about 10 minutes today to have a quick look at deal or no deal. Luckily, that's easy enough to pick up straight away. So we'll be demoing that for you a little later on. Uh, but yeah, backstab, I haven't had a chance to open it yet. Um... He says, you know, uh, you will know the, the effect is the pen knife is supplied or do we have to buy our own? Yeah, you have to buy your own knife of some kind, but you haven't got to use a, a ridiculously sharp pen knife. You can just get a kitchen knife and use a kitchen knife of some kind. Uh, but yeah, you might have to carry something around with you. Uh, which is not always good. Uh, Alex Adams says, Hi Dave, I recently received a secret stamper for Double Cross, uh, but having trouble getting the ink on the stamper. Any ideas? 
Um, I don't do double cross, so I'm not sure. It may be that the ink cartridge you have in it isn't quite touching the actual stamper, so it may be worth putting a little bit of blue tack in. So take take the ink out, put blue tack in, or something just to raise that uh, ink uh, up a little bit, that little ink cartridge, and maybe it'll touch it better. So uh, other than that, I don't know, I'm afraid, Alex, but I'm sure. Uh, if you post a message on one of the forums, a lot of people out there use um, uh, Double Cross and somebody will be able to help you. Uh, John Gorner says, oh, hi Dave, just got your, uh, just got in. You look better with the hair. Really? Uh, John, you want to see me this morning, mate. My, my pff, hair, no. Uh, I don't think so. Um, what do you guys reckon? Do you reckon it look better with hair or without? Just say with hair or without. Um, be interested to know what people say. Uh, <laughs> Tom just says, uh, Mullen just says, uh, he wants fish and chips now. <laughs> Morgan Westcott says, hi Dave, messaged you, uh, messaged the page yesterday. Please could you take a look and when you get a chance. Yeah, I've, to be honest, I've not looked at any of the Facebook messages um, for a, a good three or four days at the moment. So I'll be working my way through the uh, the hundreds of emails at the moment, but uh, I will try and get uh, a chance to look uh, in, in a little while, Morgan. Uh, Barry Green says, price is sorted, many thanks. Um, what was that with, uh, Barry? Uh, Andy Tigley says, love Bobo made you freeze. <laughs> uh, video is gone. It's back. Okay, that must have been you um, uh, on your side, Michael, I think. Uh, oh, no, Finley says uh, it's back. Oh, oh it was, was everybody, was it? That's strange. Okay. Uh, Mike Main says, um, uh, hi Dave, glad to see you are uh, still in high spirits. Stay safe and staying. I'm in high spirits today, Mike, but you want to see me a couple of days ago. I've been so stressed out, honestly. The amount of problems with people just not getting their orders. I mean, I had a couple of sleepless nights last week really worrying about it. It just, yeah, there's a lot of people on there getting very, very angry uh, with not receiving their mail. Um, Jordan Wells says, hi, Dave, um, and to you, mate. Um, Peter Burkett, got my illusionist bands, thank you. Uh, yeah, again, two weeks, guys. Um, that's almost the minimum at the moment. Um, yeah, uh, I'm very well, thanks, Jordan. Um, Paul Martin's there, hey, buddy, uh, I'm very well. Um, I hope you are well, too. Uh, great mug, says Walter. Uh, Nigel Quinn, afternoon, Dave. Hope you keep me safe and well. Uh, love to Bobo. Um, there you go, Nigel. Uh, to Bobo, Nigel says hi. Uh, Peter Burkett, nice cup. Great, yes, yeah, great, isn't it? Uh, Andy Tigley, wow, a prop bog one uh, brought my wife uh, a wifey one last week. Um, oh yeah, the uh, the prop you bought a prop bog mug, didn't you? Yeah, uh, we don't sell very many of those. Uh, Tom says uh, one man, two cups. <laughs> and Michael says uh, uh, pleasure. Um, Otto says love the cup. Uh, Scott Farrington, uh, that looks cool, mate. Just wonder what's the best chop cup uh, to buy. I like the look of the harmonica aluminium chop cup uh, by Lee. Um, something looks smart. Um, so the uh, the harmonica chop cup, um, the metal one is okay, it's good. Uh, this is by Leo Schmetzers, um, both the mini and large one, but they're quite pricey. But don't get the silicone one. Uh, so many people complain about the silicone one. The problem with the silicone one is it's a collapsible cup that's kind of been turned into a chop cup. So if you've got a cup, um, uh, that you're gonna release the ball from, you're gonna press down at that. And as you press down, the chop, cup kind of collapses on itself a lot of the time and it's just it's just not very good at all. Uh, the best chop cup I think there's out there is the PFD chop cup. Uh, it's a beautiful uh, copper cup with a lot of weight to it. Unfortunately, we're out of stock at the moment and can't get any more uh, for a little while because uh, Murphy's uh, are out of them. But yeah, keep an eye on for that one. Other than that, just get yourself a nice cheap 10 quid one, uh, Scott, and practice with it and see how you get on with the routine because there's no point spending a lot of money on a good chop cup if you find out that you don't get on with the routine, it's not for you, you know, and you don't like doing it. Uh, so yeah, um, I would say start with a cheap one and work your way up. Um, still zoomed in, Dave. Oh, God, apologies, guys. Yeah, it's, uh, it's in my mind today. Just been, yeah, I'm not quite with it. Uh, right, uh, where's your head? Um, camera angles on the table. Uh, hey Dave, uh, Lou from Benny Dorm sent through an order last weekend, uh, sent a TNT, thanks. Uh, yeah, it was uh, shipped out, I believe, uh, Lou. Um, need to zoom out, one camera, zoom out. Uh, <laughs> sorry guys, there is a delay on here. So uh, yeah, I can't see an angel, sat the cameraman. <laughs> if only there was a cameraman. Um, uh, glad he's got trousers. <laughs> sorry guys, talking groin, there we go. Um, zoom back out, Dave. You're out of shot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, guys. Um, this why I need two monitors to watch, Dave. There we go. This is why I need somebody else in the shop to help me out do all this stuff. You see. Um, where's your head? Where's your head? Um, see, if you guys didn't put so many comments, there wouldn't be such a delay, and I'd have found out by now. So, um, 
well, it could have been worse. So, you know, I, I could have been uh, a view, something like uh, uh, that. Uh, no, it would have been all right, wouldn't it? Um, yeah, it would have been all right. Yeah, actually, yeah, that was probably the worst view. <laughs> there you go. Um, right. Uh, some would say it's a blessing. Thanks, Roy. <laughs> The live show has reminded me I need to place an order or get this done tonight. Thank you, Stephen. Um, uh, Johnny Ritchie says, I had the same issue with a new stamper. Just snapped uh, open a new Sharpie and chopped it in half. Laugh out loud. Okay. Uh, can't see your head. Zoom out. Yeah, I know. I know. Without hair. Um, <laughs> so some people saying without hair. Some people saying with a Yeah, without hair. Thanks, guys. Yeah, that's my thoughts. Without. Yeah, definitely. Um... Uh, Dan Slater, that's understandable in regards to bondly manipulation balls. Uh, I think other people have had the same idea and want to learn manipulation uh, magic. We've had a lot of time in hands. Yeah, we have sold quite a few of them. Uh, I know we sold at least two sets um, during the lockdown. I didn't realise we were out of them, to be honest. Um, how do you think magic will be going forward? For example, doing tricks like French cricket, uh, says Phil. Uh, yeah, it's um, it's awkward, isn't it? Um, come on, Boba, look, behave or you have to go back in your cage. Behave. Yes, you behave. Stop it. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's like how many people do you meet and give, you know, especially women, um, give them a quick kiss or guys give a give a man hug to. And uh, yeah, a lot of things are going to change. Um, uh, I think people will be very, very wary. I mean, uh, I go out running whenever I can. Um, or we'll go for a walk down the park with Bobo. And, um, you know, sometimes going through the woods, you get a narrow path, something's coming towards you. And people will literally stand hand and get well out of the way. And as you're coming towards them, if you get too close, people really panic. And I mean... Um, you know, I always wear a mask and other people wearing a mask, but they're still really panicky. And I think that panic is going to go on a lot longer than the virus itself. So I think a good year or so, people are still going to be really wary about getting close to anybody. But I think eventually it will go back to normal again, uh, especially once they get a vaccine. Once the vaccine's out, I think everyone will relax completely. Uh, Charlie says, do you have any flap cards uh, from front uh, of the box to the back of the card? Are they really worth the price? And do Hondo's pre-made ones come with a tutorial on how to make them? Right, so um, yes, they do come with a tutorial. Uh, yes, they are worth it. They're extremely well made. Um, and um, we do have some cards to boxes, but I'm not sure exactly which ones. Best thing, just have a look on the website. If we've got it in stock, it'll show you on there, and then you'll be out of order, Charlie. Uh, Pete Meacham says, uh, hi Dave, I hope you're well, uh, received my order Tuesday, ropes are beautifully done. Uh, oh great, thank you Pete, uh, I hope you like them, uh, or glad you like them should I say. Uh, best hit chop cup on the side, uh, put it down to release the ball rather than straight down. Uh, yeah, just kind of give it a little rock like that, but I find that chop cup, I have played around with it a few times, it does collapse quite a bit. Uh, and also getting the right balls to fit the, the silicone harmonica cup is an absolute nightmare as well, because there isn't... A mag uh, magnet in the base of it there's a shim so you need a magnetic ball uh, and only the ickle pickle balls and the leather Leo Schmetzer's balls work and they're both really expensive um, how much is deal not a deal please said John Gorner uh, I believe it's 39 pounds and 49 pence um, uh, John uh, we did have it on the website for, for cheaper earlier it's on pre sale we did have it on there for cheaper but I was selling it for uh, uh, way too cheap I don't know where the price came from but yeah there's a big mistake on the price but we are matching the official price we need to sell it at stay up there Barbara. Uh, hi from Israel says um, ET um, and, and hi to you is it ET or IT I hope I said that right Chris Gillinder says, never dreamt that I would spend 10 minutes looking at a guy's trousers. <laughs> well, you know, nice trousers. <laughs> uh, Roy Brownlow says, welcome to the Baldies Club, Dave. Um, well, I've been Baldy for a couple of years now, Roy, but yeah, welcome back, it should be, I think. Uh, Pete Meacham says, uh, did you say you were able to share your handling of Phil? Uh, yes, Pete, uh, I can do that. Um, I've got a couple of YouTube links of it. Uh, they're all hidden links or private links, so send me an email and I will uh, send you the links to those back. Uh, and Otar says, hey, Jason. Um, uh, hey, Jason. Um, <laughs> Jason isn't here, but Jason is currently in hospital. That's a pause, you know, for effect, Bobo. Yes, he's in hospital. But no, he hasn't got coronavirus. So um, Jason is in hospital, but he is there with his wife, who is currently going into labour. She's getting induced. In fact, she's probably giving birth as we speak. He, hello. He did say that he'll probably be end up watching the live show from the uh, the actual um, uh, hospital as she's given birth. So if you are watching, Jason, um, uh, tell uh, tell your wife, push. There we go. So uh, and congratulations, uh, and don't forget if it's a boy, David. If it's uh, if it's a girl, David Ina. Yeah. 
Uh, right, how much is the animated parrot? Yeah, she's, um, uh, um, uh, 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 what do they call it? My mind's gone today. So much going on. Um, animatronic puppet, aren't you? Hey, an animatronic. Not real. There you go. Couldn't buy her. Congratulations, Jason, says Jason, uh, Daniel Ricks. Right, Bobo, you're going to go in your cage for a bit because you are being a pain in the backside. There you go. She's just getting so demanding because she's such an attention seeker and because she gets no attention from any visitors or, you know, we don't even have many deliveries here, so she can't even say hello to the delivery man like she normally does. So she's getting so, so restless. Um, yeah, uh, as, as most, most of you guys at home, I think. Right, okay, so what we're we gonna do? Um, let's go over to Alex's book corner. So uh, Alex was gonna send uh, a review last week He's got major problems with his internet at the moment. Um, he did another video and tried to send it this week uh, and he just couldn't get sent through. Every time he tried to send it, it'll go through overnight and it'll just break down and um, yeah, it would end up not being sent. So um, today he did a shorter one and sent it via 3G on WhatsApp. Okay, so we do have a very low quality book corner from Alex. Um, so we're gonna go over to him now. So yeah, apologize. It's a bit shaky when it starts off and he puts the camera down, but uh, you get the idea. He hasn't got any books with him, um, but I've got some books to show you what they are. If you look at the little screen in the bottom left-hand corner of your screen, you'll see what the books are as he's going through the review. So over to Alex. Hello, Prop Doggers. It's Alex in, in his book, book corner. corner. Um, uh, but I haven't got any books because, because um, I'm not, not in my own house, house at the moment. moment. Um, and so, and so I'm, I'm, I'm magic free. free. Um, but, but I do I know what we've got in a Prop Dog. And, and um, so one of the wonderful one things about Prop Dog, of course, is, is that we do have books in stock. Um, a lot of other places, books are, because they're heavy and they're difficult to ship in from America and so on. I'm not sure if some of them maybe don't actually have them in stock, but we do. And I normally get to to, to, to read them, which is um, a really good book that um, I love that work with Prop Dog. Um, and then I get to read on my advice to you. But um, I don't have them now, but what I can say is we have, um, so if you're one of the people who've been enjoying Spoiler Alert um, by Ryan McNeely, um, he has a new book out called Dirty Work. Um, it's not that new, but it's new to us, it's new in stock. Um, and that's been getting some good reviews on the Magic Cafe, so I got that again to have a look at. And also there's a DVD. Um, called oh, ult uh, Ultimate Self-Working, self it's on our so website it's in the recent ones, ones. Um, and that's and all of his um, effects um, that are uh, self-working um, within Spoiler Alert um, and Dirty Work, and um, they're really, really good. Um, so if you don't want to buy the books, um, although in the books you get 50 effects, um, in Spoiler Alert you get 50 effects, on the DVD you only get 12, um, but there you go, it's Horses for Courses. Um, also, we've got Ben Hart's book in, of course, which I think if you're interested in parlour magic, so say over sort of 15, 20 people, um, I reckon that is the book for you. Um, if you know anything about Ben Hart, you know, he's, he's really professional, his routines are really well crafted, um, and I'm sure that book is um, absolutely brilliant. Um, I'm really looking forward to having a look at it. It's one of my biggest regrets about the isolation, is not having Ben Hart's book at hand. Um, so I mean, I've been a bit unlike, unlike Parlour Effects where you were perhaps you couldn't really buy it for the tricks because they were two people tricks and um, I don't think the point of Parlour of, of parlor Tricks by Morgan and West was actually for you to, to use their tricks but more how you should develop your own um, tricks. Um, I think here, here the, you, know, you probably can buy Ben Hart's for the tricks as well as how to develop your tricks. Um, and then another book that I'm excited about is um, Scott Green, his Excellence in Family Magic. Um, if you do any children's magic or, or any parties like that, um, you'll know that often, often you're amusing the children, but at the back of the room you've got the parents and they're chatting, they're making phone calls, getting themselves glasses of wine um, and catching up. Um, and that's a big distraction and often the family, um, the children rather, can um, take over from the parents. So they take their behaviour from the parents. If the parents aren't paying much attention to you, then perhaps the children won't. Um, and what Scott does is all of his tricks, they are, they are, they tend to be children's magic based tricks. They're those sort of props of topsy-turvy bottles, um, mutilated parasol, um, you know, tri tricks that you've probably already, um, or props that you've already got at home. Um, and he makes them into family tricks. So they, they, the routines he does with them um, and the jokes that he does appeal to both children and adults. And when I say that, I don't mean he makes double entendres that fly over the children's heads but the parents are laughing at, 
and vice versa, the, the magician in troubles that the parents aren't interested in but the children are, he actually manages to make them so that both people are, are, are laughing at the same thing um, and enjoying the same magic for the same reasons, um, which I think is really, really clever. Um, so that book's well worth um, having a look at. Um, and also um, we've got False Anchors by um, Ryan Schultz. Um, it's his collection of his False Anchors um, books that he had, they've all been sold out and they've now found them all together um, in one big nudge. They were very well received when they came out so I'm really looking forward to getting hold of them. Um, the tricks in them are really quite easy but um, extra deceptive um, thanks to how he, he presents them and how he, how he tells you how to eliminate um, people's guesswork and so on, so creating false anchors. Uh, and then there's a book that we do have in stock uh, when I was there um, that I had a look at because it fascinated me um, and it's Asymptotes by Ben Blau and it's Mentalism with Cards. Uh, what really fascinated me was about it every time I mention cards or I meet a mentalist um, they want to separate themselves from cards as much as possible. Um, they don't want to be confused with uh, uh, card tricks, um, they want to be known for, for their mental psychological powers or um, whatever it may be and so um, I was fascinated by it and actually um, I've looked at a few of the tricks and um, I read some of the book when I was at Prop Dog um, and I'm surprised it isn't selling um, better, we, we, do, we do sell um, but I'm surprised um, it's died down um, and really it's an amazing book, it's a beautiful book, it's a very big book and the tricks in it are simple, um, they're not, some self-working, some require um, some, some regular slides, nothing too difficult and they're well explained. Um, but actually the construction of them, the presentation of them, um, and just, just how they're designed, they are designed purely as mentalism effects. And really the difference is you're, you're divining the chosen card rather than finding the uh, chosen card. So it does leave that air of, of psychological um, connection between the person. Um, and it seems much more like, like a brain sixth sense um, effect than the fact that you physically found the card somehow through sleight of hand. Um, so I really, really recommend um, Asymptotes by, by Ben Blau. And um, that's really all I've got to say at the moment, I'm afraid. I'm stuck here. I haven't got any books myself. Um, I haven't got any cards. Um, I don't know really. <laughs> um, I haven't even got Netflix at the moment, so the internet's down. Um, so really, um, I'm listening to, to music and um, trying to help that spread my creativity. But um, God bless the everyone out there. Um, do check those books out. Uh, they're all on the website and uh, hopefully I'll be back at Prop Dog soon and I shall leave you now back into Dave's capable hands. Thank you uh, there Alex, yeah sorry about the feedback on that, um, this system over here uh, I needed to hear Alex to know what he was talking about and I didn't realise the feedback would come over to you guys but um, yeah I managed to find a mute button for the microphone while you were doing it. Uh, so yeah thanks for that um, uh, Alex, uh, much appreciated and uh, yeah, um, some some great information there from from him. Uh, Alex is the uh, the book guru. So uh, yeah, and I see Jason's uh, joined us now. Um, so uh, hello, mate. I hope all is well, and uh, I hope it's going to come soon. Um, yeah, let me know as soon as it does, mate. Uh, right. Uh, congratulations, Jason says Daniel Ricks and Pete Meacham. Come on, the noble says Andy Ray. Um, Chris Gillen says, a few months ago, Dave, you sourced a really nice version of the old brass block and a matchbox. It's not on the website. Did the supply dry up? It did, Chris. Yeah, we bought all the last of the ones that were available. Uh, hopefully, they will be available again soon. Uh, we keep checking, but uh, even if they were available now, because of the lockdown, we wouldn't be able to get them in. But uh, we are keeping an eye out for them. We've got some versions in stock, but just not quite as good as the ones you were on about. Uh, pass congrats to them both, please, Dave. Um, uh, Walter, he's on uh, live now, so... Um, uh, I'm sure he's already read that. Uh, if it's a boy, it should be Bobo. <laughs> I said it should be called Prop Baby. Um, so yeah, uh, Andy Tigley. I can't believe Jason's uh, going to call his baby Bobo. <laughs> Scott Farrington says congratulations, Jason. All the best to you and your wife. Congratulations, congratulations. Heard the jail door jail door slam on Bobo. Yeah, poor Bobo. She's sulking in a cage now. Uh, Steve Lewis, what we're going to do, uh, <laughs> it's like Jason was, uh, what we're going to do, we're going to have a baby. Uh, good luck, Jason, uh, says Steve Lewis, uh, and uh, oop, uh, echoing, yeah, I know about the echo, guys, sorry about that. Um, all right, Paul, take it easy, mate.
calm down. <laughs> um, this feedback, yeah, I know, I know, echo, 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 yeah, guys. I don't hear what you guys hear, so uh, yeah, it's still, it's still a learning curve on here, you know, we're still learning the system. Uh, slap Bobo's feathers are being naughty. <laughs> Um, Andy Tigley, I can't speak Echo, uh, please translate what he's saying. Uh, Echo, go on, perfect, yeah, okay, uh, there you go. Uh, Darkest Corners is superb, says Nigel. Uh, yeah, thank you, Nigel. Um, I haven't had a chance to look at it, but I'm hearing some amazing things about it. Uh, Roy Brandler says, are you using OBS, Dave? No, we're not, we're using a system called Ecamm, uh, Roy. So, uh, yeah, slightly different. Uh, I don't know what OBS is, but uh, yeah. Well, I kind of know it's something to do with web um, Facebook lives and stuff like that, but yeah. Uh, Sean Man says, thanks for the order this week, Dave. I even got a Bobo marked edition, even better. What was that, Sean? I mean, Bobo does occasionally, you know, take a bite to something, but we, we, we usually give those away or, or sell them off cheap. So I apologise if something got through. Um, Jonas says, I like the Nielsen uh, chopped cup tea cup i know it's not for everybody but it does give you an opportunity to do a different kind of routine um uh, as i show the link uh, in the link so yeah do check that out guys uh, thanks for that jonas uh, walter says uh, thanks alex and dave uh, jonas handling of the nielsen tea cup is amazing says otto uh, we'll have to check that afterwards uh, otto kramer thank you says jonas uh, so much love in the air, guys. Uh, Stuart Bresnan says, uh, received flashed a post-it pad. Absolutely superb. Thanks. Any ideas for carrying in my pocket? It's delicate and would easily get damaged. Cheers. Um, yeah, I mean, either carry it in a wallet or a little Ziploc bag or something. Uh, it's one of those things that, yeah, just kind of work out pocket management, I'm afraid, Stuart, uh, the best you can. Uh, Jason says, thank you so much for the wishes and good luck, guys. Looking forward to being back at Prop Dog soon, even though I'll no doubt be knackered thanks to the Prop Baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, can't wait to have you back, Jason. Can't wait to have everybody back. I want a day off. Just want a day off. That's all. Just a day of doing nothing. It'll be amazing. Three weeks when a day off, and another three weeks to come. Great. Uh, great job, Alex. Uh, says Andy Ray, and uh, lots of good luck for Jason. Uh, will the baby have white hair? It might do. Yeah, if it's genetic. Who knows? Uh, prop puppy. Yeah, prop puppy. We used to have a prop puppy. Um, and um, I always said if I was going to start up a, a, a kids uh, magic business and that uh, we're going to make kids for, for magicians. Uh, kids for magicians. <laughs> There's a few magicians that would like me to make kids for them. Um, uh, if we we're going to make props for kids, we would call that company prop um, puppy as well. Uh, but then we have prop birdie and uh, prop daddy, you know. Prop everything. Um, Dave, what was the name of the last book uh, with the red cover? That is, um, how do you pronounce it? Uh, Asymptotes? 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 I don't know. That's what it's called. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just search for ASYM. It'll come up. Um, Adam Evans says, Hi Dave, have you seen Michael Chatelain new effect? If so, is it any good? Do you mean this one, Adam? Um, I might as well do this for you now, guys. So, um, yeah, this came in uh, yesterday. Um, we've got a load of these in. I watched the trailer, thought, I like the look of that. That's a good worker. It's baffling. It fooled the hell out of me, so I thought I'd get it in. And, uh, yeah, it's good. It's good. Um, it's so easy to do. This is one of these effects you can probably buy and then do the same evening, although I recommend spending a bit more time on presentation and handling. Um, so yeah, I can actually show you this now. Um, so uh, after only about 10 minutes practice, because that's all the time I had, uh, but we, you know, I, I I, there's very little sleight of hand. It's just all in the uh, the presentation. It's a bit like Phil Plus. It's a great trick, but it takes no physical skill. It's all in the presentation. So I haven't had a good time to work out too much of a presentation, but that doesn't matter just for you guys. So what I'm going to do is to go over... What I'm going to do, Jason, uh, it's catching. Um, I'm going to go over to a split screen. So there we go. Let's make sure that zoom in is not... Yeah, that zoom in gets a bit funny sometimes, but that seems to be working all right now. So... Um, in an ideal world, guys, I would have a volunteer here to pick a card. So there is no volunteers. So um, uh, I'm just going to um, mime that stuff. So I hope you can all see okay. Uh, and we have a deck of cards. Ta-da! Okay, so I'm going to go through these cards very slowly like this. 
okay? And at any point, I want somebody to say uh, stop. Now, obviously, there's no one here to say stop, so I'm just gonna mime saying stop, so you can go as many times as you want, and so let's say somebody says stop now, okay? So you would say stop there, and that would be the place you stopped. And I have a little bit of money over here. I'm going to put that down there. That's my little marker of where you said stop. Okay, you can make out this as a bet or something as well if you want. And uh, you can say, look, if my prediction here matches uh, where you said stop, then you get to keep the money. Uh, or I get to keep the money or, or something. You can make up an excuse to put your money there or banknote, whatever you want to do. And you say, right, um, this was my prediction here. And that is the three of spades. You see that on the front camera over there. And let's see where you said stop. You said stop just about over here. And that card there was, in fact, oh, look at that. It's the three of spades. Uh, so there we are. I, I get to keep my money. There's your match. Perfect match. And uh, not only that, but I also said that on the note itself, I said it would be the three of spades. Turn it around that way over there. There we go. So uh, that's not bad, is it? But the best thing is, all these cards were indeed absolutely blank. So there we go. All the cards are indeed blank. There you go. So uh, yeah, that is uh, Deal Not Deal by Michael Chatlane. And um, yeah, uh, let's just go back to the main camera. Where's my mouse? Oh, not so down mouse. That is, uh, yeah, uh, deal, uh, no deal, and uh, it's, it's brilliant. I mean, that was 10 minutes of watching the video and going, oh, I can do that. I ran for it twice, yeah, no problem at all. It's such a clever method. It really is clever. And, uh, yeah, I mean, everything's virtually examinable as well. There is a gimmick involved. Um, uh, so, yeah, uh, brilliant. I, I like it, um, and I think you guys will like it. It's, it's something new. It's baffling. And, um, yeah, when, when I watched the trailer, I was like, how the hell uh, did that work? So um, uh, I haven't seen it, but I've heard there's some slating off of it on the Magic Cafe, but I haven't read the forums. I didn't get time to do that. Uh, I just know there's some slating off of it. So I don't know what that's about, but trust me, I like it. I think it's a worker and I would definitely 100% do that at a gig. In fact, if I was at a gig, I'd do it in somebody's hands. I'd say, here, hold it in your hand. And I'd go down at like that and I'd count the cards out uh, and I would do it in their hands. Okay. And they can say stop wherever they want. So uh, yeah, I hope you guys like that. All uh, right. Where were we on here? Uh... So Adam was asking about that one, wasn't he? There, there we are. Right. OBS is open source uh, Ecamm. Oh, right. Okay. Uh, oh, right. Oh, I don't... Yeah, I'm just on Ecamm. I don't know what open source Ecamm is, uh, but yeah, it is um, a regular uh, Ecamm, Ecamm Live, it's called, and uh, it's brilliant software. Uh, Roy Brownlow says, um, there wouldn't have been another baby in nine months if she hadn't already been pregnant, Jason. <laughs> okay. Uh, Andy Tigley, trying very hard to persuade my wife to buy me Darkest Corner. Uh, yeah, having a wife, guys. Oh, how much of a pain that must be. I'm so glad I'm single. I can buy whatever I want, if I had any money. Um, <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I do feel for you. Um, Ian Smith says, something different about you this week, Dave. You've been hitting the weights. Um, no, the gyms are closed, mate. Um, my weight training is going for a run. And what I tend to do now is every bench I see, I just go down and do a load of press-ups, bench, and that all the way around. So yeah, nothing new about me. It might just be my new slick uh, streamlined hair. Haircut allows me to run faster. Um, but yeah, nothing new. Uh, Adam Evans, where's the best place to buy roughing spray? Um, Mart version, you mean matte version. Can I buy it from a non-magic shop? Oh, absolutely, Adam. Yeah, so um, go to any hardware shop. Now, I think most of the home bakers and B&Qs are all closed at the moment, but you'll find the smaller hardware shops are still open. We've got a local one down here that's still open. And you're looking for a matte clear lacquer. We explained it last week. The one I know works well is Rust-Oleum Crystal Clear, okay? So the make is Rust-Oleum, um, uh, the brand is called um, uh, Crystal Clear, uh, and it comes in a gloss, a semi-matte, uh, or semi-gloss, and a, a matte on its own. And you want the matte version. It's a tin about this big, it's about a tin or a tin, and it'll last you for, for years. So you should be able to get that. Um, if you need a photo of it, uh, let us know. I've got a photograph downstairs. Unfortunately, I can't ship any out. This is why we stopped selling roughing spray because Royal Mail has new delivery rules on shipping any aerosols. So you can't physically ship an aerosol now unless you pay for hazardous shipping, which has becomes just ridiculously expensive. Uh, right, secrets of a Puerto Rican gambler. Don't worry, I'm not precious about these things, um, says Sean. 
Um, that's a good book, apparently. Uh, right. Uh, please tell us uh, you were off on Easter Monday. <laughs> no, Pete. No. Not a chance. We had a lot of orders over the weekend, and I can't just not be in here for a day because being on your own, I don't get a chance to have any time off. I did go home early. I was home by five o'clock, but yeah. Uh, yeah, no chance for a day off doing this lot. Um, Roy Brandler says, OBS is like a free version of Ecamm, just as good. Oh yeah, we've done that one. Uh, Pete Burkett, can you show us deal or no deal? And do you think it's good? Just done that. Um, Jason says, I'm currently part uh, of the Making Kids for Magicians racket. <laughs> uh, Otto says, uh, I'll keep my flash post-it pad in an empty card case uh, that I opened alongside uh, a duct, uh, along along the side and duct taped so that not to let it transfer too much body moisture to the flash paper when I carry it in my jacket pocket. Oh, good idea, Walter. Um, Brian Robson, um, only 10 minutes to practice. You just killed off half the Magic Castle saying that. Uh, oh, really? I mean, it's a self-work trick. It's like Phil Plus, you know, it's, it's 10 minutes. It's not, yeah, it, it's not a highly skillful trick. Schools in the presentation, it's all down to Michael Chaplin. He's just brilliant method of doing that. I mean, it's so, so clever and yeah, it, it's brilliant. And you're using a regular deck of blank cards as well. Um, so you're, you're never going to have to pay for an entire new deck. The gimmicks you get with it are going to last a long, long time. They're really good. Um, so yeah, it's, uh, it's well worth it. Um, right. Uh, with deal or no deal, it looks like you do a cross cut force and the effect will be the same for the spectator. It's definitely not a cross cut force. If you watch the video back and you watch the trailer, it's not a cross cut force. It can be anywhere he likes. And that's the beauty of it. Um, uh, and, and if it looks like a, a cross cut force and just a change of handling, just, just make sure you say, look, make sure I'm just putting this down here. All you're doing is literally you're dealing down the cards um, wherever they say stop. Let's say they say stop there. Okay, you're putting the note on there and you're going across there, okay? So make sure you're saying that that's where you said stop. So if you're going down, see that that card there, that's where you said stop. Remember that card, I'll mark it there and I'll put those on top like that. And then later on, you just show the card and it's there. So yeah, really, really clever method, guys. Uh, and the reset's really, really quick as well. Um, and it can be any card as well. The only thing you'll have to change if you're gonna change a card is to change the bank note you've got it written on. You can always write that on on a dry mark on the new plastic notes and that'll wipe off. We sell dry mark sharpies if you want them. Uh, and then you're just gonna to have to change your, uh, if you're gonna have another prediction card, um, just have another one of those. But yeah, you can have a couple of them fold it up in your pocket. Or if you're using a dry marker, just, just change it over and go that way. Um, and yeah, definitely not always the same card. Um, is Jason watching this one, uh, this one hand as his good lady grips the other? Brave lad, <laughs> I can imagine that. Push! Is it coming? Yeah, yeah. tell me when it's coming. <laughs> uh, hi Dave, good to see you okay, says Hans. Uh, thanks for the gift, arrived Wednesday this week, uh, together with the rest of the order. Oh, great news, Hans, glad to hear you, uh, to hear you received it, and uh, uh, you're most welcome. Uh, Adam uh, Wayne Evans, uh, FFS. <laughs> How's that done? It looks awesome. Yeah, it, it's, it's baffling. When I watched the method, I was like, oh, brilliant, genius, very clever. Uh, looks really good, not what I thought it was, says Andy Tiddley. Um, could the spectator lift the note off uh, like you did? Uh, yeah, they could, um, but you'd have to have a little bit of clever manipulation, just be just audience management, just good audience management. But yeah, you could just say, just move the side. Yeah, you get away with that, no problem at all. Um, Deal or no deal looks a little bit more robust than Chatelain products like it. Yeah, with Michael's products, a lot of them are flap cards or, or movable parts. These ones have no movable parts. They're just a card that will last a long time. It's not going to break. It's not going to warp. It might get a bit dirty after a while and then you have to change it. But yeah, um, I, I could show you the, the gimmick like that and, and, and you wouldn't know that it's it's a gimmick. Um, put it that way. Very, very good. Uh, Cafe Not Castle, says uh, Robson. Okay, yeah. Uh, Alan Robson, uh, hi guys, hope you're well, Dave. Uh, yeah, very well, thanks, Alan. Thanks for joining us, buddy. I hope all is well with you and the family. Uh, Robert says, can you do deal or no deal again with a different card chosen? Uh, I can have to go back and set up and then do it again, but yeah, you can, you can do it. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, as I said, all you need is just to change the note or have a dry marker, wipe it off uh, and change it over, and then another card. So if you just go in your case, close up case, or have a spare deck of cards with another card on to match, um, you don't even need that. You could write it down, but then, well, you could just do it with that, but it's nice to have a bit of, uh, 
have it there for the sake of the logistics of the trip. Yeah, that's all I can say really. Uh, rough and stick much better than spray, says Andy Tingley. I completely agree, Andy. Uh, like the car routine, very interesting, says Sebastian. It is indeed, mate. Uh, John Clayton, the rough and stick is better and doesn't smell the house down. Yeah, it's better for your lungs as well. Uh, rough and spray isn't good. If you are using rough and spray, by the way, do use a ventilated area. Okay, once or twice isn't going to do you too much harm, but if it builds up in your body over a period of time, it's something you don't eject. It's not good for your, for your body. Um, yeah. Yeah, or your lungs. Uh, eight pound roughing uh, mat spray uh, on eBay. There you go. So uh, James Howell, thank you, mate, for that. Uh, Brandon says, have you got any new close-up bags to keep your props in? Uh, no, we're, we've got some close-up cases behind. Um, I don't need this one anymore. Just to show you. Uh, I'm going to take my ceiling camera down. Uh, if you look over, doo -doo -doo, where are we? There's, over there, I'm going to turn it the other way around. Uh, there you go, guys. So those are the cases we have at the moment. So we've got quite a few close-up cases there. Um, those are all on the website. If you did want uh, any other ones, unfortunately, during the lockdown, we probably won't be able to get any more. So um, don't need that anymore. There you go. Um, Adrian says, hi Dave, did you receive my email about the custom-made close-up pad from Dubai? Um, I, I don't know, Adrian, I've, I've applied to so many emails, um, as I'm, I'm still hundreds and hundreds, excuse me, emails behind. Um, I th think... I think I did reply. Yeah, I think I did. It rings a bell, um, uh, Adrian, but I will double check after the uh, live. In fact, drop me another email and I'll just double check. You may well have sent and been in your spam box or something. don't know. Uh, Timmy says, do you sell Dobbo's dollar? Uh, I don't think we do, Timmy. No, um, uh, not if it's not on the website. Uh, Theo says, hey, Dave, I accidentally placed an order for 6,500 euros instead of 65 pounds. Uh, <laughs> I went wrong with the zeros. Uh, what do you suggest? <laughs> tough um, <laughs> who is it um one of our staff i can't remember who it was um it might even be might have been dean i can't remember but yeah we we had an order for a uh i think it was a couple of pounds and a couple of uh zeros were added or the, the decimal point wasn't put in and uh yeah it was a bit of an overcharge uh it all went it was all sorted and it was all fine but yeah it was quite funny uh and he says my delivery took 13 days so it just takes a bit of uh, patience. Your parcel will arrive, so no need to call Dave just wait. Thanks, Andy. Yeah, 13 days, uh, yeah, that, that's about average at the moment. Some of them are a lot longer, some of them a lot closer. Um, extreme close-up uh, panic, and <laughs> the wife doesn't find out. Right, I think we've caught up with everything. Um, what's the time? Uh, yes, now's a good time to finish, actually, guys. So uh, I've got a lot more work to get on with tonight to catch everything up with. Just look at my little list over here. Done that, done that, done that. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I've done all the things I was going to talk about. So uh, nothing else really. So uh, thank you all for joining us, guys. It's a bit of a shorter one this week, but that's good for me because I've got a long night ahead of me. Um, stay well, stay healthy. Have a great weekend, and I will catch up with you all next Friday. Have a good one, guys. Bye-bye.